from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, an educational support program for intermediate level English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is for people of all ages. Now, if you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to help you meet those needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 35. I have a question for you. Which domestic animal is most viewed on YouTube? Well, if you answered cats, you're right. Today, we're going to take a different look at cats. We're going to learn about, a, about stray cats in an organization in southern Oregon that works to rescue strays and put them into good homes. Let's start with this video clip. Almost by definition, stray cats need a home. Well, there's an organization here in Medford working in Jackson County in Southern Oregon that helps that happen, helps cats connect with a home, and appropriately, the organization is called Cats. So I'm John Letts on the scene of Cats, and we're going to find out more about what this organization does and how it does it. Office manager Sandy Fowler and board member Marsha Foster sat down for this interview recently. Fowler explained what this organization is all about. CATS stands for Committed Alliance to Strays and our mission is to get the stray and homeless cats off the street of Jackson County, Oregon and we get them, we test them for feline AIDS, and feline leukemia, we vaccinate them, get them warming medication, flea medication, we get them spayed or neutered, and we microchip them before we adopt them out. And they're, they're here in our shelter until they get adopted out. I asked what kind of person adopts from cats. A cat lover. <laughs> we, have, um, we have all sorts of people. We have single people, young single people who are away from home for the first time that are lonely. We have families that want to bring a pet into their, their family. We have older people who have gone through life and, and are, are lonely and want a companion, but a dog is too much for them. This work seemed to go far beyond a job for Fowler and other staff members. Volunteers seem equally committed. Marsha Foster began her work here as a volunteer. My background actually started as a volunteer. I came in and we had some review as far as being a volunteer. You come in, there's a presentation you go over, and you usually go around with another person and they train you. So you start in here, you can do everything from cleaning and you can help um, there's laundry, oh, everything, folding, prepping. We used to prep at night for the next day, have all the rooms ready, uh, so that the other cleaners that did come in later could do all that. And then it came to a point where that I was able to help with adoptions. When couples came in or an individual came in, you would work with them, take them around to see the different kittens and cats and go from there, which is very exciting. And then it just snowballed. I also work on different fundraising things for cats. And from there, I ended up helping out with different things. I did secretarial for the cats board for a temporary to help out because they didn't have one. And from there, I ended up on the board. And it's very rewarding. Extremely. <laughs> I 
I asked how many cats are receiving services. It can vary a lot depending on if it's kitten season and how many kittens. Um, we have two rooms that have condos in them. There's eight condos in each room. So uh, most rooms it's just eight cats in the room. And then there can be eight cats in here. This is uh, the playroom, which we lovingly refer to as the sumo room, because at one point in time all the cats were very large that were in here. But uh, during kitten season, there's more than that because we keep all the, the litters of kittens together in a condo. So there can be anywhere from, oh gosh, uh, about 24 cats up to about 40 cats, depending on how many kittens there are. And then we have an intake building yes. that has about the same and many, many foster families that we love and adore because they help us out greatly taking care of especially bottle feeding babies, which take a, it's like having a, a human baby in your house. So um, right now I think we have somewhere between 80 and 100 cats in, in the program, which is not all here on site. Yes, hi. Crazy. Where do you oh. get the cats? The cats, all of our cats are stray and abandoned cats. So they come from people who have found cats in their neighborhood. Um, we do take cats from, if somebody has passed away and nobody in their family can take the cat, we figure that's the ultimate abandonment. Um, we don't take feral cats, so there is a difference between stray and feral. A stray cat is a friendly cat that you can touch and pet and just doesn't have a home. Whereas a feral cat, really, they don't want anything to do with the human, any human interaction at all. They're going to run from you. If you back them into a corner, they're going to come out swinging. So we they don't, just don't make good pet material. They don't make good it. pet material. We don't, we don't do with ferals just... We don't have the resources to deal with the ferals. There's other um, uh, organizations in the Definitely. community that, yes. that deal with those. So stray cats in Southern Oregon have a friend, or as we've seen, a group of friends, a committed community that helps them get adopted and get good homes. Reporting from Medford, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, an instructional support program for intermediate level English learners. Our program is designed to use the power of TV and the internet to help you improve your listening proficiency, as well as reading, writing, and speaking. This is segment two of episode 35. When it comes to reading, learning the phonics, the symbol sound relationship of the target language gives you a huge benefit. Yet the study of English phonics is a whole area of instruction unto itself. Now, we don't try to cover English phonics in this program, but this episode on cats does create an opportunity to touch on the subject. There are 44 distinct sounds in English. The letter A in the word cats is a common sound. We call it a short A sound. Thus, there are many words in English that rhyme with cat. So let's take a look at just a few of the more obvious. At rhymes with cat, as does bat, fat, and hat. Mat rhymes with cat, as does nat, pat, rat, and sat. Now, do you hear the short A sound in the middle of each word? How about tat, as in tit for tat? Then there's vat, a large container for a liquid. Now here's how I made this list of rhyming words. The word cat has three distinct sounds. K -a -t. I took the last two sounds and went through the alphabet, trying each letter at the beginning as a beginning sound. And if that made a real word, then I added it to the list. Now in dealing with English phonics, it's important for us to look at some special letters we call vowels. As in many, but not all, languages, in written English, all the symbols, the letters, correspond to sounds instead of to meaning. So the letter C at the beginning of the word cat doesn't mean anything at all. 
It stands for a sound, or in this case, two sounds, k, the hard C, and s, the soft C. And the middle letter in the word cat is an A. When the C precedes an A, it has the k, or hard sound. Now let's look at the middle letter, that A. The letter A is an example of a small group of letters we call vowels. Every word in English contains a vowel. Besides A, the other vowels are E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. Vowels between two non-vowels make the short vowel sound, like the A in the word cat. Hear the A sound. The letters C and T in the word cat are not vowels, so they're called consonants. So the word cat is a classic example of a consonant-vowel-consonant consonant word, what we call a CVC word in the education world. So all I did was go through the alphabet for consonants that formed words that would be put in front of the letter AT, at, which itself turns out to be a rhyming word. Now, this whole business with the short A sound gives you only one of the 44 sounds in the English language, so you can see why I don't try to teach much phonics on this program. If you want to undertake a study of phonics, I think the best starting place is a website called Starfall. You can visit them at starfall.com. I'll post a link to this website on my own website, letscreate.org. The Starfall website is a low-pressure, fun way to learn phonics, and you can explore the symbol-sound relationship of any letter you wish. It's designed for little kids, but it's a great resource for people of all ages who want help in reading English. Spoiler alert, later in this episode, I'm assigning homework that involves getting and reading a book about cats. I'm wondering how much you understood from our first video clip. The visual elements made it clear that the clip was about cats and kittens. The narration and interview responses were all about an organization that helped stray cats in Southern Oregon. We'll learn more about that organization when we return. Is it true that ramping up your English is going to the dogs? Yes, it is. And cats, horses, rabbits, geese, jaguars, and more. Join us in our new unit on animals. Ramping up your English is for intermediate English learners from all language backgrounds and all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our new thematic unit is animals. This science unit helps viewers advance in language functions that will stretch their English skills and learn a few things from dogs as well. Openness, trust, faithfulness, loyalty, playfulness and more. The, the qualities that we as humans really do need to learn and to have in our lives on a daily basis because they deliver such beautiful rewards. Ramping up your English can be seen on the Ashland Home Network on channels 15 and 115. It's on channel 182 on Charter Cable in the rest of Southern Oregon. Join us for better English and a grand time with animals. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. We take a content-based approach to help intermediate level English learners improve their English. Our current theme is animals. Now, if you want your English to get better, you're in the right place. Today, we're featuring the theme of cats. This is segment three of episode 35. In the previous segment, we took a little time to teach a very basic lesson in phonics. We'll build on that later in this episode. But first, let's see this video clip that tells us more about an organization that helps stray cats. The organization is the Committed Alliance to Strays, and office manager Sandy Fowler and board member Marsha Foster explain what their organization does to take strays off the street and get them ready for adoption.
There are few things in this world more entertaining than kittens at play. These little performers have a hopeful future thanks to an organization called CATS, Committed Alliance to Strays. A stray is a cat who has no home. Sandra Fowler of CATS explains how stray kittens enter their system. Okay, so tell me some about the intake process. Um, the intake, uh, we, when we have somebody who has a, a cat that they'd like to bring to us, they call us, they set up an appointment, they bring it in and just fill out some paperwork, and uh, we take the cat into our intake building where it will stay for 10 days, make sure it's healthy, get tested, get everything. Um, it's really important that people don't just dump the cats with us because we want to have as much information as we can about a cat. We realize that's not always a lot, but where they were found is always good because sometimes people call and say they've lost a cat and if we don't know where a cat is from, we don't know if this might be their cat. But um, we just, you know, we like to keep records. That's also very important of, of cats and where they're coming from and what's, how they were found, anything that they know that's been done to them. And then what is the adoption process to go from, to kind of skip over all the right. things you do, which we can, do, which we can okay. get back to, but what's the adoption process? Okay. Um, adoption process, when somebody wants to adopt the cat, they come in, an adoption counselor will take them around and meet the cats, and hopefully they'll find one that they click with and clicks with them, and in which case they, it's very easy, they fill out paperwork, they um, pay the adoption fee, and they take their cat home. It's very. It's a very simple process. Tell me a little bit about that. I, f I find this kind of intriguing. The mm -hmm. whole thing of being a foster parent to a oh. kitty. Oh. Yes. So yes. could could both of you say, make some <laughs> comments about about that one? It's it's wonderful. It's also it's the job you love to hate <laughs> because sometimes giving them up is is very hard. But you know they're going to get a good home. We have a lot of, mostly what we have that come in to go to the foster are going to be kittens, but we do have some adult cats that have been through a lot and need a little extra love before they're going to be doing really well in here. So um, people who want to be fosters, they do the same thing, come in, fill out some foster forms, tell us if they want bottle feeder babies, babies that can eat on their own, a mama and babies, an older cat, what, what they're willing to take with them. And from there, when we get cats in that need to go into foster, we'll try to find the right foster family to match them up with. Um, we provide the, the food and the litter for them, everything they need, and always they can call us anytime if there's any problems. Bottle feeder babies are a lot of fun and a lot of work. <laughs> uh, it's like having a, a, like I said, having a, a regular baby baby in your house. Twenty. You have to get up. 24-7, every, <laughs> yes, yes. every couple of hours in the middle of the night to feed it just like you would a human baby. But, you know, they're, it's so much fun to watch them grow up from this little tiny, tiny thing. Um, the youngest one I know of, we just got in several months ago. He was almost uh, bulldozed in a backyard, and the mom had just, just dropped him, just given birth to him. And she ran off, and she was not going to come back with a bulldozer in the yard. He still had his ambulance cord, the afterbirth, everything still attached to him. He was about an hour old. And I, I didn't give him much hope because that, that's really young, but his name is Dozer. And he is, <laughs> he is so still going strong. Our Actually, our executive director is fostering him. And um, I actually think she's going to be adopting him because her daughter fell in love with him. But he's going strong, and it's been so fun to watch him grow up. Now, I understand there's uh, volunteers that, that help you. Uh, how important are they to uh, succeeding? Extremely. We, we wouldn't be here without our volunteers. We have um, six paid employees, and the rest are volunteers. So the volunteers answer the phones for us. They, um, they help take cats to the vets for us. They are the ones that are the um, adoption counselors. They do the laundry. They clean up any messes that might be made during the day. We, we absolutely could not do this without the volunteers. There's, there's no way. We, we never get anything done 
in, in the office. I wouldn't, none of the bills would get paid because I wouldn't have time to do it. Oh, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. Like people walking in and they want, you know, someone to go with them around, um, an option individual, mm -hmm. like the front desk, whom we usually have certain, there are specific people who come on certain days, and without them, I just don't even know how anybody no. can manage because yeah. they're handling the phones, they're handing the door, each person, individual, it comes in and out. We're featuring an organization called Committed Alliance to Strays. I asked them how they handle the funding for all these activities. All of our funding, 100% is donations from the community. So we live strictly on the donations from the community and nothing else. And so no, we don't have any government funding or anything like that. We're hoping to get some grants here yes. in the, the near future. Um, unfortunately, in the past couple of years, we haven't had anybody who knew how to write grants for us. So we have had several people step forward just recently who know how to write grants. So fingers crossed, we'll be getting some and that might relieve some financial stress. So when you consider all of the, the participation in the fundraising as mm -hmm. well as the people willing to foster cats mm -hmm. and people yes. willing to adopt cats. Mm -hmm. What does this tell you about the attitude of our community about cats? It's, uh, there's more cat lovers than cat haters. Um, we did, uh, was it two, three years ago? Three years. We, um, we almost had to close our doors. We had nothing was, in, our, in our bank. It was, and oh we put we put out a plea and it was, incredible what happened. In two weeks, we made $150,000. The community stepped up, they came out, they donated money, they donated food, they donated everything that they could to keep us going. We got, um, we had a, the, the interview got on to online, and it went on to Jackson Galaxies. If you know him, he does The Cat from Hell on TV. Got onto his oh. website, and um, people know him around the world. We got donations not only from across the country, but we got donations from England, Australia, everything. So there are cat lovers everywhere. At that time, when everything was so bad, we also, the news channels were fantastic. Um, we went to one of our little local reporters, whom she immediately got someone over here. Yeah. They did a big interview, so it got in the Mail Tribune. It was just everybody really stepped up, and it was wonderful. So, now the organization still carries out its mission, yet it's always in need of support from the community. You can learn more about Committed Alliance to Strays at their website, catsandkittens.org. We'll have more on cats on another video clip for Ramping Up Your English. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. I'm your host, John Letts, and you're watching episode 35. Earlier in today's episode, we found a list of words that rhyme with the word cat. We learned a tiny bit of English phonics about the short A sound. Now we can expand that knowledge to longer words. If you can recognize the small words we listed earlier, they can help you pronounce longer words. Bat in the word battery. Cat in the word category. Dat is not really a word, but you can see the pattern in the word data. See the word mat in material and the word pat in pattern, sat in the word Saturn, and tat in the word tattoo. So not only are cats just too cute, they're the key to one of the 44 sounds in the English language. We're reviewing this small bite of phonics to help you when you need to read. Reading is an important step in elevating your level of English proficiency. When you read about our theme, you'll find that your listening comprehension skills go up when you watch the video clips that are featured in the program. So your homework today is to visit your local library and check out a book about cats. Now, if you understand very little of what you've seen in today's show, 
I suggest getting a book from the children's section. Now, don't be embarrassed about that. It's a great way to learn more about your target language. I use them often when learning to speak Spanish. Now see if your book has any words rhyming with cat. If your library has books about cats in your home language, by all means check them out. You'll learn more about our theme and reading them will activate some of your prior knowledge. Both are smart things to do in learning English through our theme of animals. We'll be right back after this. What's a horse doing on ramping up your English? We're galloping toward a new unit, animals. So we're in the country meeting some horses. Horses are just one of the many animals that will help viewers ramp up their English. So funny. Our Mr. Cowboy, you loving that? Horses, boy, I'm, I'm getting the flies. You see, horses have to deal with flies. Coming soon to RVTV Voices, a new unit on ramping up your English, an educational support program for intermediate level English learners from all language backgrounds. So how can horses help you improve your English? Watch Ramping Up Your English to find out on channels 15 and 115 in Ashland and channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. And you know, watching this program is a smart move. You can watch all episodes of Ramping Up Your English by visiting my website, letscreate.org. There you'll find a link to starfall.com for learning English phonics, as well as the materials we used in today's episode and the homework assignment. Now you can also watch and even download today's episode and others by visiting archive.org slash details slash rogue tv choose ramping up your english from the sidebar at the right or choose my name john letts this is episode 35. this program runs on the channels 15 and 115 on the ashland home network and on channel 182 on charter cable in southern oregon see us on the rvtv programming schedule at rvtv voices that's rvtv.sou.edu Channels and showtimes may vary in other areas. Well, that's all the time we have for Ramping Up Your English. I want to thank my loyal, my loyal crew, RVTV staff, and I want to thank you for watching. See you next time on Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RBTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.